Operational Situation at the Front on the 23rd of March. Today, we will talk with you in more detail about the Bakhmut, Avdiivka, and Zaporizhia sectors of the front. Well, we will start with the Bakhmut direction. Bogdanovka Ivanovskaya. It means that heavy fighting continues on this sector of the front, and we talked about it the day before yesterday. We talked about it yesterday, we are talking about it today. Because the Russian side does not retreat, they continue, they do not abandon attempts to improve the tactical situation. They do not abandon attempts to dislodge the Afu garrison in the area of the reserve. That is, further attacking actions, further assault actions are carried out by Russian troops. At the same time, I am attacking not only with armored vehicles, where we spoke earlier, but also small assault groups are making attempts. We are talking about the situation at the clarification, due to the fact that there are very serious roles, there are battles. So there is still no clear information that Russian troops were able to gain a foothold, but there are still a lot of attacks from their side now. At the same time, the site is quite complex on the one hand. It would seem that there are not only marked fortifications here, there are several more fortified areas, there are several small supports. But the bottom line is that the enemy uses a number of bombs. And accordingly, we need to understand that whatever the company type support, whatever the fortified area, Yes, it's all being destroyed. Therefore, this is connected with the difficulties that we now have in this sector of the front, including this, because there were reports that there were a lot of arrivals in the city of Chaz Yar, and accordingly everything that reaches the city of Yar also falls under the blows of enemy tactical aircraft. Therefore, now it is rolling. The main task, of course, is to cling to the reserve, which will make it possible later, yes, to transfer additional forces to it, and already develop, which means that offensive actions, as they previously assumed, south of Ivanovska, to reach the section of the road T0504, well actually, to interrupt the supply of Ivanovsko itself. Because to date, we do not record any changes in the settlement itself, although Russian troops have taken assault actions. They are doing a lot, they continue to do it, but they manage to restrain it. Therefore, now they are already considering bypassing the North more. We used to say, that there were a lot of attacks from the south of the blaze, a lot of attacks. Now the main blow has moved north of Ivanovo. That's the situation we have. It is quite difficult, as we see that the enemy has not slowed down for the third day, conducting assault operations in the direction. According to Kleshevka and Drivka, we have positional fighting here, and at the same time distracting strikes, as well as in the Bogdanovka area. We are moving to the Avdiivka direction. It remains hot with us as well. According to Farts, the enemy has a partial success. It was possible to advance to a depth of 250 meters along Mira Street. The footage was published, which means that Russian troops were located approximately in this area, and accordingly, of course, part of the forest belt came under their control. According to the situation, the situation for yesterday, the situation for today, as it seems, they are leveling up more here now. I expressed the front line, in order to attack later with a wider coverage, because there were a lot of attempts to attack from the forest belt south of Burdick, and there were attempts to advance to the neighboring parallel forest belt they managed to repel. Therefore, now they are considering the option of moving along Mira Street to the intersection from Central Naya Street, and accordingly try, of course, the northern bid, because there were attempts to move south of the bid. The Apu managed to repel these attacks, but now, one of the goals, as we see, is to get around a small bid to the north. But here, let's just say, there is still a huge progress to be made in fact. Because, as you remember, over the past month, the enemy had advances, but they were actually minimal. If we take the whole segment, it is up to a kilometer in Burdick themselves. At the same time, a huge number of assault operations were carried out with the support of armored vehicles. There is such a moment, as for Orlovko. As you know, there have been statements from the Russian side, there have already been statements from our side, that Russian troops are attempting to enter Semenovka, that is, they are attacking from Novoselov Street, along a section of the road about 0542 and a little to the south of it, that is, attempts to cross, well, enter Semenovka from the south, accordingly interrupt logistics. Therefore, the situation remains quite tense. And at the same time, along Elagin Street, as we talked about, to its western part, that is, to the west of the Zaryansky Raid. They are also undertaking quite serious activity, I will tell you, from the enemy, again with the support of tactical aviation. That is, the number of air bombs, air bomb strikes attack quite a large number. Therefore, the fighting continues. The enemy's main goal now is, I would say, now the northern part of Burdick, 
and the southern part of Semenovka. That is, not so much progress along the beam, well, although actually it would be logical, yes, why move here, if you can try to get around, therefore, now we see their tactics, let's say, to reduce the fighting, with the aim of taking Semenovka. Well, thin thin. We said that the situation is being clarified. Yesterday, we analyzed drone footage and added a gray zone. We talked with you about where the position of the Russian troops was at the pumping station alone. Well, actually, I published it in my telegram with geolinking and coordinates. Well, one of the infantry positions was in this area. We have talked with you that infantry units are already being attacked and with the support of armored vehicles and so on and so on. Well, they also said with you that they are trying to bypass just the same northwestern outskirts of Thin, that is, to take it under control. And yesterday, I told you quite pessimistically that everything is already clear here in principle. In a section up to 215 kilometers wide, they advanced to a depth of 177 kilometers. Thin, yes, now it has completely passed with all its suburbs, with a pumping station, with sewage ponds, sedimentation tanks. With a cascade of sedimentation tanks, all this is now under the control of the enemy. Well, actually, we had attacks, as we said, so they attacked on from the Dacha village, that is, they bypassed it to the north. And at the same time, it means, as you remember, we marked the gray zone, said where the enemy is attacking. But he attacked not only in this direction, advanced and gained a foothold at the intersection, but also along the southern forest belt from it, at the field abandoned reservoir, they also caught on, secured themselves. That's why we said yesterday, that their main goal, is also to move in the western direction, but now we see it. They were messages. We've seen drone footage. There were reports that they were moving on. And actually, the main obstacles are just a few supports in the fields. Well, it's clear that in the fields now it's, let's say, you can use the fields as a gray zone, when you can't, neither side can advance. Yes, there are a huge number of drones, technology is being affected, but the enemy did not forget. Now has tactical aviation advantages, so he uses it, and it just creates very big difficulties. Naturally, the vector of attacks we have goes in the western direction, that is, to bypass the positions north of the beam. There is also activity recently. We talked about the activity of the Durgan Pervomeskaya and Vodian, that is, here they are trying to move in the south direction, yes, but now we are talking about the fact that there is activity in the north direction. Although the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine were strong enough in this sector of the front, there were a lot of attempts in the 23rd year for Russian troops to advance in the northern direction. But now, we are talking more about the fact that attacks are no longer coming from the south to the north, but that these positions are bypassed north of them. Therefore, the situation in general is quite difficult for us in the Avdiivka sector of the front, and let's say as we usually say, yes, we will see a more voluminous picture within 24 hours, but here, as well as in the Bakhmut direction, verdict battles are taking place. Therefore, the situation, despite the fact that we have marked the red zone, it remains to be further clarified, because there are a lot of attacks, as in Semenovka itself, or rather in the south of Semenovka. There are now battles on the southern outskirts, and accordingly, further assault actions are being carried out by the Russian troops in the vicinity of the Thin and in the Vodian area. According to Provomeysky, we do not record any changes, although there are also strikes with air bombs with a control module. But so far it is possible to repel attacks here, although there are also quite a few attacks from the Russian side. It is clear that the main forces are now engaged by the enemy just to squeeze out the garrison in the area of Semenovka. Verdict Semenovka. But still, there is activity. According to Novelsky, no changes. According to Georgievka, the Kurik of direction. Yes. Although I have said three directions, I will comment in more detail, but we will also consider Kurikovskaya in more detail now. So, we talked about positional battles in the eastern part, that attempts are being made northwest of Marienka, that is, in the area of fields, in the area of forest belts, to advance, bypass a number of positions, well, conditionally go to the cascade of stakes, but there is also very serious activity from the enemy now to the west of Marienka. And we are no longer talking about the forest belt, which we have north of victory, where there have already been attacks by Russian troops, in the direction of the T-shaped intersection, where there were counterattacks from the Afu. We speak for the site where we have a field reservoir located. In other words, as you remember, there were attacks on him by Russian troops when the red zone was marked. It means that approximately in this area, there were advanced positions of Russian troops. And actually, from this area, they attack from this point in the direction of an abandoned field reservoir. This is the first moment. The second point 
is that there are also a number of attacks within the open fields. And as you remember, a lot of messages are being received now, we also voiced it, that they are attacking at night, the enemy using the night. Well, I mean, the weather has been pretty good lately. There were deterioration, but short term, yes. This has affected aerial reconnaissance to some extent, but still a big bet is now on the night. Because there is, of course, a shortage of drones with night vision devices, with thermal imagers, and so on, and so on. Accordingly, the enemy is now making a lot of attempts to bypass the advanced positions of the armed forces of Ukraine, which we have in the eastern part of Georgievka, that is, striking from the south. The main goal is not so much a field reservoir, as to cling to a forest belt, well, for two forest belts, which we subsequently go to the central Georgievka street. In other words, Russian troops and the Russian command are now making the main reference point for them. Therefore, we continue to have active battles in this sector of the front. Therefore, yes, we will take a closer look at the four directions. As for Novomikhailovka, a little later, I will post a fresh video in my telegram. It was possible to repel, there were several roles, but the 79th Brigade repelled all attacks, so we do not record any changes. Although the activity of the Russian side, it is also quite serious remains in this sector of the front. Well, we move on to the Zaporozhye section of the front, the Orkhov direction. We talked about it at the beginning, let's talk a little more in detail. Yesterday, we talked about the fact that there are roles at work, but that the situation is being clarified. Later, that is after the evening broadcast, there were further reports that new roles were coming. In other words, they continued yesterday, and they continue today from the Russian side. In other words, there are a lot of such, such very intense attacks are going on now. Again, the APU also reports that the activity is quite high, and drones from the Russian troops. Therefore, we see that not only armored vehicles are thoroughly prepared, not only infantry assault groups are attacking, but we also see prosperity in drones. So let's analyze the situation according to the initial work. Again, we have attacks on the central part. The main place where Russian troops are trying to gain a foothold so far is the school district. Accordingly, we are left to clarify, as we said yesterday on the evening broadcast with you, the district of the district, which are located to the south, on whether they were able to take it under control. So far there is no information, and there are no visual shots from this area either, because the main emphasis is now being placed by the Russian troops not on gaining a foothold in this area, but to gain a foothold in the southern part and break through to the central part of the work on. That is well, conditionally, let's introduce this area, this is where the enemy is trying to show the greatest activity now, trying to catch on and gain a foothold, so there are fights going on. There are a lot of roles during the day, they have been going on since yesterday, and accordingly, Verbovoya northwest of Trubovo also has activity conditionally in this area, about the same as we talked about it yesterday, but the fighting continues. So far, the Russian troops do not have confident control over a number of positions, but again, they are undertaking a really large number of attacks, I will say, on this sector of the front, and I repeat, they also use a considerable number of drones on this sector of the front, which also creates difficulties. Here just the same, we have seen a decrease in activity in tactical aviation. We see, that RAP systems work very effectively, on the left bank of the deeper. Little by little, naturally, this efficiency is transferred to the main part of the front, the active front. Well again, the enemy also changes frequencies, also does not sit still, as we talked about before. Therefore, he tries of course, by any means, to find where to add efficiency to it. Therefore, active assault operations are continuing now, into areas northwest of Verbovoy. And accordingly, the south, attempts to break through to the center, and gain a foothold, on the part of the Russian troops in the very work on. There are a number of distracting blows, but they are not positional in nature. This is between work and Verbov, between Novo Prokopovka is recruited, that is, approximately along this line, they are active. Well, I repeat, these are small groups of infantry more to distract from the main attacks. Therefore, here, let's say for the most part, the activity on the part of the Apu, is precisely in beer with drones to stop, and the enemy also understands this, so it shows minimal activity in this sector of the front. There are still a number of reports of activity as we said, walk the polished direction. It is saved. That is, for a peaceful village, there were reports that from the Ministry of Defense, from the Russian troops, that they managed to completely take control of it. Perhaps it means, that they have advanced beyond it, but so far, we have no visual information about further progress. Well, at least let's say, the northwestern part, and the west, well, maybe somewhere here. But so far, there is no visual information, 
although several reports of their activity in this sector of the front have been received. As you remember, they were active in the area between Chervin and Malinovka, but it went down to positivity. So we did not record any changes. This is the situation we have at the front. Quite tense remains on the Zaporozhye sector of the front, the Bakhmut direction, Avdivskaya, respectively Kurakovskaya, and the eastern Terno, in the eastern yampolovka limansk direction, is also very much now. As it is, we did not comment on this section of the Limansk front today, because in principle we managed to repel attacks there. But the fighters of the media themselves report that there is a fairly active section of the front. A lot of it is coming from the Russian side.